let's look at some of these things and I'm going to be using the same terminology that I'm going to be using for three machine and, and so on. Uh, different textbooks use different terminology but because I want you to become familiar with this terminology that's what we are going to be using. First of all JI, job I, and let's write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight job problem. Then we will use the terminology AI to represent the processing time on the first machine. A, B, C, D, and so on. AI is the processing time on the first machine. So let's put five. BI is used to represent the processing time on the second machine. So let's put some numbers in here for So this is representing a eight job two machine flow shop problem. And for that we have Johnson's algorithm to solve the problem. The way that Johnson's algorithm works is very, very, very simple. There are only two steps. First, we have eight jobs. So the sequence that we are going to be using has eight slots that need to be filled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one of these jobs are going to be scheduled here, 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 and so on. The next step is to look at all these processing times, both AI and BI, on both of them, and find the minimum number, the minimum processing time. In here, the minimum processing time is one in here. And there is no other minimum. Then, when you find the minimum, based on whether that minimum is on the first machine or on the second machine, you will schedule it in this sequence. For this, the minimum processing time is on the first machine. If it is on the first machine, you schedule that early in the sequence. First in the sequence. So that is J7. So you schedule J7 in here. As you schedule one job, you will eliminate that job from for the consideration. Then you will look at the others. There is one job in here and there is another job in here with the processing time of 2. This one this is an arbitrary choice. Whatever you want to select first doesn't make any difference in here as you will see. There's two in here and it is on the first machine. So you will schedule it first. So this is already scheduled. The next slot available is J3. So, so this is eliminated from consideration. Now you have this job, and it is on the second machine. So it is a schedule last. So this is J6, will be scheduled at the last of the set. So that's the other one. Now if it happens that both of them were on the same machine, 
then you have a choice. You can either put them in here or in here. Doesn't make any difference. So the next one, two is gone. We have a three in here. We have a three in here. Another is on the second machine. So we will schedule J2 in here. And you will continue this process until all jobs are exhausted. Next one is four, and we have two fours. So the next one, um, five on the first machine, and one on the second machine. So J1 goes in here, J5 goes in here. Notice that there was another four, but that's already gone. It's no longer available. So there are two more jobs, and this is the minimum. That's the minimum. So J8 goes last. And the last one, of course, is J4, which goes. So this is my sequence. That sequence says, send these jobs in the same order on the machine. So send job seven to machine one. When it finishes, take it to the machine two. Do, you cannot start both of them at the same time. These were the basic requirements that we introduced last time. No job can be processed on two separate machines at the same time. No machine can process two different jobs at the same time. So these were some of the things that we introduced last time. But anyway, now let's look at the GAN chart. For the GAN chart, again, M1, machine 1, and M2, machine 2. Okay. And this is, of course, time. Okay? So we are going to schedule them the same way that we have. Job 7 is 1 and 4. So anybody finish that? That's J7. And that's J... Seven on the second machine. And some of the terminology that we're going through. What is the completion time? I have already scheduled job seven on two machines. What is the completion time on the first machine? One. Okay. The completion time on the first machine is one. What is the completion time on the second machine? Is five. So it is 1 plus 4, which is 5. Then we will schedule J3. J3 is 2 and 5. J3 is 2. So it's going to come down here. That's J3. 2 and 5. And 5 is going to go here. That's J3. Two additional terminology. One is idle time. There is no idle time needed on machine one ever. But you can schedule them right after each other. On machine two is a different story. It depends on when this job finishes. Right now this was two and this machine was working. So there was no need for the idle time. It just had to wait. It had to wait until 
second machine finishes its processing, and the moment that it finished, it was just sitting there waiting for this, so it just started its work. So there was no idle time on the second machine. But let's assume that this number was 10. So it would come all the way down here, and this machine would finish, and will wait for the job three to come down. So those idle times are very significant that are entered in here. Because this is my last machine. If I enter any idle time in here, if I have to incur any idle time in here, what would happen to the end of the process? It just keeps increasing. So the idea is to avoid idle times. So when you write this in terms of uh, mathematical programming, minimization is to minimize this idle time. And if these idle times are minimized, then you have the best schedule. So J3 in here, so what is the completion? If, if I had only these two jobs, if I had only these two jobs, what would be the completion on the first machine? One and two is three. That's three. And what is the completion time on the second machine? It's one plus four plus five is ten. What is that one, that idle time in here that this machine has to wait until job seven comes down? What is the completion time of the schedule if you only had these two jobs? Ten. So the completion time of the schedule is the completion time of the last machine. Let's always keep that in mind because it becomes more complicated as we go through those. So it's the last machine that is playing the significant role in what the completion time of the schedule is. And our intention is to minimize the completion time of the schedule. So, um, job five, job five is four and ten. Job six. Job six is nine and two. Nine and thirty-three is forty-two. So it's coming, and that was thirty-eight, so it's coming in here. It's coming in here at forty-two. And as you notice now, this job is going to come right after this one. But the machine has to wait. So there is an idle time in here. Because it finished at 38, and it has to wait for this job to come to be available. So that's two coming down here which will make it 44. Completion time on the 
first machine is 42. Completion time on the second machine is 44. And completion time of the schedule is also 44. And this schedule is often. 